Hi students, now we are going to explain the resonance column apparatus which we have done in the practical class. So it is an experimental arrangement to determine the velocity of a sound in air. Okay, the construction of uh, this resonance column apparatus you must have studied in the practical class itself. So it has a wooden board vertically placed with a 1 meter scale fixed in it and a long glass tube, vertical tube of length 1 meter. So the bottom of the glass tube is uh, connected by rubber tubing to the reservoir which holds some water. Okay, by adjusting uh, the water level, okay, we can set any length of the air column inside this glass tube. Now, a tuning fork, a vibrating tuning fork is held above the open end of this glass tube. You can see that a portion of this glass tube is filled with water and above the water level there is some air column. So, when you keep a vibrating tuning fork above this glass tube, the air column above the water level is going to vibrate with a certain frequency. Suppose if you adjust the length of the air column by moving the reservoir, we have to adjust the length of the air column. At one particular length of the air column, there will be resonance taking place. That is, the air column is going to vibrate exactly with the frequency of the tuning fork. That means uh, they are in unison with each other. So the air column is resonating with the frequency of the tuning fork. So let us assume, let us assume uh, that uh, at a particular length L1, uh, the first resonance is taking place. Okay. Now, what will happen actually when you keep the vibrating tuning fork above this air column? The sound waves, uh, longitudinal waves will go in the downward direction and they will fall on the water surface and they get reflected in the upward direction. So, the incident sound waves and the reflected sound waves, uh, they will uh, interference, uh, interfere with each other. As a result, uh, longitudinal standing waves will be produced. Okay? So that the characteristics of uh, standing waves or stationary waves is formation of nodes and antinodes. So, if you assume that the air column is vibrating with its fundamental frequency, that is the minimum possible frequency with which the air column can vibrate. So, in that case, the reflecting point, the closed end will form a node and the open end must form an antinode. So, now this glass tube or the air column is going to act like a closed organ pipe whose bottom end is closed and forms a node, open end, okay, that is forming a anti node at the top this is the minimum frequency called the fundamental frequency and now let us take the length of the air column at this position is l1 and in terms of wavelength the distance between a node and the neighboring anti node is equal to lambda by 4 okay so that now the length of the air column l1 must be equal to lambda by 4 4. Though we say that the length as per this picture, the length L1 is equal to lambda by 4, the antinodes are not formed exactly at uh, this open end, the edge of the open end. Uh, so there are some glass walls will be there so that the molecules of the air will be restricted to vibrate uh, with maximum amplitude. Therefore, the actual antinode must be formed uh, above this. Uh, mouth of the tube at a height e at a small height e which is called as end error okay so this end error has to be corrected we have to add this error with this length l1 therefore the l1 okay plus end correction e is equal to lambda by 4 so there is a shortage at the end that is called the end error. So we have to correct it. So the end correction E has to be added along with the length of the tube L1. So L1 plus E is equal to lambda by 4. And this I will call as equation 1. 
okay suppose if the reservoir is moved down so that the length of the air column can be increased so what will be the next harmonic the next harmonic will be what one loop or one segment added with this half loop so this is a one and a half loop so this will be the next mode of vibration for which the length of the air column is taken as a l2 so the end correction above this height only the actual antinode will be formed therefore in terms of wavelength what is this l2 let us find out so the distance between one antinode and the nearest node is as usual what lambda by 4 and the distance between two consecutive nodes is uh, lambda by 2 therefore uh, lambda by 2 plus lambda by 4 this distance uh, will be equal to what in terms of wavelength it is 3 lambda by 4 so L2 the length L2 plus E must be equal to 3 lambda by 4 3 lambda by 4 so this is equation 2 ok now I will learn uh, subtract i will subtract uh, the equation 1 from equation 2 so equation 2 minus equation 1 uh, implies left hand side is what uh, l2 plus e minus l1 plus e and the right hand side is what uh, 3 lambda by 4 minus lambda by 4 so 3 lambda by 4 minus lambda by 4 now E minus E get cancelled on the left hand side so that it is L2 minus L1. Okay, this is on the left hand side. 3 lambda by 4 minus lambda by 4 is what? Uh, 2 lambda by 4 or this is equal to lambda by 2. So lambda therefore, uh, lambda from this equation is equal to 2 into L2 minus L1 or lambda is equal to 2 into the change in length delta L so delta L is what L2 minus L1 so I will keep this as equation 3 now the velocity of a sound in air the velocity of the sound in air is given by V is equal to lambda into the frequency F so this is equal to 2 into delta L for lambda I will substitute 2 into delta L into F or this velocity is equal to 2 into frequency into L2 minus L1 so this is the expression which we used in the practical class is it that so this is how we have to determine the velocity of sound in air if f is the frequency of the tuning fork so the two resonating lengths l2 and l1 we have to determine in the practical class okay now an expression for end correction so the end correction for that what is the expression so the end correction is denoted by the letter e so from the first two equation itself i can get an expression for e now I will multiply the first equation okay first equation that is equation 1 into 3 implies so I will multiply by 3 on both sides so that the 3L1 plus 3E so I get 3L1 plus 3 times E is equal to what 3 lambda by 4 then the second equation I will rewrite. I will rewrite here. Okay. So L2 plus E is also equal to what? 3 lambda by 4. So first equation multiplied by 3 and the second equation is rewritten as it is. So that the right hand sides of these two equations are same. So that I can equate the left hand sides. So now 3 L1 plus 3e is equal to l2 plus e this uh, end e end correction e is brought to the left hand side so that uh, 3e minus e is equal to l2 minus 3l1 
So 3e minus e is 2e. Okay, so 2e is equal to L2 minus 3 L1. Therefore, the end correction e is equal to what? L2 minus 3 times L1 divided by 2. So this is another equation we have derived. And this is equation number 5. So from this experiment in the lab, you find only the velocity of sound in air at a given temperature, at room temperature. But in addition to that, in the theory, we are deriving an expression for what end correction itself. Now, this end correction depends upon whether you use a narrow tube or a wide tube. So, it is found that the end correction is nearly equal to 0 0.6 times the radius of the tube. So, radius of the glass tube. So, what are the points you have to remember? In the examination, what will be the question? Describe the construction of a resonance column apparatus. You have to write the brief construction. Understand? And then derive the expressions for the velocity of sound in the air and the end correction. I hope you must have understood well. Fine.